Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Daily Shakespeare. My name is Michael. Today is Friday, which means we're taking a look at another one of Shakespeare's comedies. Today's comedy is Twelfth Night, or what he will. This employs one of Shakespeare's very favorite comedic tropes, and that is that of mistaken identity. One of the ways that he loves to do this, and many of his contemporaries love to do this, is by making people twins. It's very easy to get confused about who somebody is if they look identical to another person. You can see this also used in As You Like It. This play uh, flips it on its ear a little bit because instead of having the twins be male, the twins are fraternal brother and sister, which opens up a lot of mistaken identity romance options that the play finds very, very funny. The speech we're going to look at today is from Duke Orsino in Act 1, Scene 1, where he is having a very melancholy day dealing with some music. He has been spurned by a woman that he has desired for some time, who has sworn to go into mourning and never leave mourning, and all of his amorous moves towards her have been met with complete dismissal, and he's very sad. Now, that doesn't sound very funny. And as we've talked about on this program before, many of Shakespeare's comedies, when taken strictly at face value, with everything that is just written down on the page, these things don't sound very funny. They sound kind of sad, maybe terrifying, but certainly not funny. Comedy is all in how you play it. Comedy is just tragedy plus speed, or plus being extra and over the top. And playing over the top as an actor can be very, very difficult. How far is too far? How far is not far enough? In my opinion, I think it's always better to go a little bit too far than not far enough, because then you find yourself being unbelievable in a completely different way that really tends to mar the entire piece around it. I would rather swing for the fences and end up in Kansas than try and reach first on a bunt. Let's take a look at Duke Orsino's speech from 1-1 and see if I can show you what I mean. If music be the food of love, play on. Give me excess of it, that surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. That strain again. It had a dying fall. Oh, it came o'er my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Enough, no more. It's not so sweet now as it was before. Oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou that, notwithstanding thy capacity, receiveth as the sea. Naught enters here of what validity and pitch so air but falls into the abatement and low price even to a minute. So full of shapes is my fancy that it alone is high fantastical. So by trying to take the character in an over-the-top direction, we end up with something a little more ridiculous, a little more funny and easy to be funny. And when combined with the physical comedy staging aspects of these plays, they can be so funny. Imagine a man begging his servant for more music. Imagine the process of producing that music being difficult and then telling him, no, I've changed my mind. But that's about all the time we have for today. As always, if you have anything that you would like to say about the show, let me know how you enjoy it. The comments section below is a great place to do that. It's also a wonderful place where you can let me know what you would like to hear me speak in the future. I love getting suggestions from people. Uh, it helps make this process a little bit less lonely. You can click the subscribe button right now. That way, another episode of Daily Shakespeare will appear in your YouTube feed every single day. But for now, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow.